My first tutorial on this channel was on how to make these cell similar fractals, using the geometry node system in Blender 2.93. However, since then, the system has been rebuilt from the ground up, so if you're using Blender 3.0 or above, the information in that video isn't really relevant. <clears throat> so in this video, I will go through how to easily make self similar fractals using the geometry node system in Blender 3.0 and above. First, I will add an icosphere with a subdivision of 1 as my base object. Then in the geometry node's workspace, add a new node tree. The main idea is to add a scaled down copy of the base object to each of the vertices of the base object. To do this, add an instance on points node and connect the geometry output from the group input node to both the points input and the instance input. Then set the scale in the instance on points node to something like 0.4. You might have noticed that the original object is now gone, so let's bring it back by adding a join geometry node and connecting the geometry output to it as well. This gives us one iteration of instancing, where we use the vertices of the base object to instance scaled down copies of itself. So let's add another iteration by instancing scaled down copies of the base object on the vertices of the instances as well. To do this, duplicate the instance on points node with Shift D, and in the points input, connect the instances output from the first instance on points node. Duplicate the group input and connect the geometry output to the instance input like before, since it will give us the base object to instantiate. And finally, add another join geometry node and connect the instance output to it as well. To add more iterations, just repeat the process. Just be careful not to add too many, since this will very quickly become very heavy. So in my case, I will use 4 iterations. Once we have all the instances in place, we can create our own version of the wireframe modifier to turn a fractal from solid to hollow directly in the node tree. First, add a mesh to curve node. This will remove all the faces and leave us with just the edges of the mesh as curves. To then add geometry back to these edges, we just have to convert the curves back to a mesh with a profile curve. To do this, add a curve to mesh node and a curve circle with a resolution of 3 and connect it to the profile curve input. This allows us to control the thickness of the wireframe with the radius value in the curve circle node. So set it to something like 0.05. The resulting mesh is shaded smooth by default, so if you want sharper normals, you can add a set shade smooth node and disable shade smooth. To add a material to the resulting mesh, just add a new material in the materials tab. Then add a set material node at the end of the node tree. and select the material in a dropdown. A nice trick I like to do for shading fractal meshes is to use an ambient occlusion node as the base color to add more contrast. To add some colors, you can add a color ramp after the ambient occlusion node, and then add whatever colors you want, and control the distribution with the positions of the color stops. With this setup, you can use any mesh to create self-similar fractals. Though be careful with the number of iterations, since meshes with more vertices will require a lot more computing power. Of course, if you want to use another mesh for any of the iterations, you can either use one of the mesh primitives as the instance object, or you can use an object in the scene 
but dragging it from the outliner to the node tree. And that's about it. I hope you found this video helpful and that you learned something new. See you next time.